It is time. Three months have almost gone by. We're not there. <laughs> We're not there yet. Kind of. We're very close. But the 2023 NASCAR season is coming around and I have to make the preview video. So we're going to talk about uh, mainly the Cup Series because as you guys know, I'm not really able to watch a lot of truck races, but especially not able to watch a lot of Xfinity races just due to the time that they usually start on Saturdays. But uh, for the Cup Series, I am able to watch. And that is what we are going to be previewing, which is the Cup Series for 2023. Make sure you leave your comments down below. What do you think is going to happen in terms of the champion, in terms of people to make the final four in terms of dark horses drivers are gonna win a lot of races and all that good stuff as sky wants to go out the room hold on one second okay i want to give a shout out to all the patreon members as always for supporting the channel as well thank you guys as always for supporting you guys are the best you guys know that uh and let's get into it so the 2023, that 2023 NASCAR Cup season is going to not feel as drastically different as last season. Last season, we had the introduction of the next-gen car and all that good stuff. Um, but this season, it is going to be uh, a little bit more, I would say, not too many changes, a little bit more predictable, uh, and we will see how it goes. You do have the Chicago Street Race in there as well this season, so that's going to be something really, really interesting. I think that is in the summer, uh, but, you know, we'll, we'll see how that goes. You do have a rule change that came out yesterday, which is no more uh, cautions for, uh, well, how do I explain this? No more cautions during the end of stages uh, for road course races. There you go. That makes sense. Okay, so at every other track, as it will be the same, a caution will come out. You'll get your TV break, all that good good stuff um, for the stages. But at road courses, the caution will not come out. Stage points will still be rewarded, but they, the caution will not come out, which is a perfect, perfect decision. It's, this, it's, it's what we've been asking for for a few years now just because it it just does not work with road course racing it's fine everywhere else um it, it's good for super speedway racing because it, it 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 ups the intensity um during different parts of the race um it's good for oval racing because sometimes oval racing you know i'm talking mile and a half stuff it could get a little bit boring um for the newer fans because obviously we didn't have stages back in the day but for the newer fans and, and for people to get a little bit of that break you do want um you know that caution to come out in case it does i i don't think it's as necessary as it once was because the next gen car is a lot tougher to drive so more natural cautions do happen but you know i'm, I'm, I'm going with it how for road course racing it just never made sense it always made the 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 strategy really predictable and it also punished cars for going for the win because if you wanted to go for the win you couldn't get the stage points and now you will be able to get your stage points and still go for the win and the strategy will be a lot more different and i expect those road course races to be a lot more green flag um and it's going to be a lot it's just going to be an, a solid road course race so that is something that's going to be different when it comes to um the actual racing everything else kind of remains the same there's a new rule about not having to be in the top 30 in points, which to, to make the playoffs, which is, yeah, whatever. Like if, if a Rick Ware racing car wins the Daytona 500, they'll be in the playoffs. Okay, cool. But um, other than that, everything remains the same. So I thought long and hard about how I was going to do this preview. Would I predict the champion? And I'm not actually going to do that because I think predicting a champion is way too difficult. Uh, usually you have to see at the beginning of a season which teams have the speed. But in today's NASCAR modern era with the current playoff format, I think predicting a champion is just throwing a dart somewhere and just hoping you hit the bullseye. Like, it's just way, way too difficult, um, mainly because of how random it can be. I think predicting the final four is something that is a lot more easy, and I think that should be the goal of a lot of these teams. The goal shouldn't necessarily, I want to win the championship. That is a goal for a lot of teams, but the goal should be make the final four to put myself with a chance to win the championship. Because once you get there, you just have to have one solid race. And it can, it might not happen for you. Ask Denny Hamlin. He's been in that situation a lot. Had fantastic seasons. Maybe had even sub, subpar seasons. But he has gotten to the final four. And then it just has to click for you. You just have to have the fastest car on the day. And for the luck to go your way. Ask Martin Truex Jr. Um, not last season, but the season before. When Kyle Larson is able to beat him out on pit road. And, you know, if the caution never came out, he would have been a champion again. But nope. Because Larson was able to get a very fast pit stop and then he won the championship and Larson did not have the fastest car that day he was the fastest car throughout the season but he did not have the fastest car that day Joey Logano I think last season was a lot more even and we expected that because of the next gen car uh it evened a lot of things out 
you've never really had a dominant driver in my opinion but Joey Logano was the most consistent through the 10 races in the playoffs he definitely showed speed most consistent no trouble no issue I kept making jokes about him drinking a pina colada and chilling on vacation because he was just so calm cool and collected they show up to Phoenix they had two weeks to prepare for that race and they had the fastest car and they won the race no drama no, no nothing crazy happened and Joey, Log Joey Logano became a two-time champion so that is why it's to happen it's a who is going to make the final four. Who do I think is going to be the strongest there? Um, and and these, these, these are my picks. All right. This, this is my pick. So I believe that my first driver into the final four will be Denny Hamlin. Um, I do think Denny Hamlin will make the final four again. <laughs> I don't know if he's going to win it, but uh, he will make the final four again, mainly because I think he has a lot of responsibility. Uh, in, well, now that Kyle Busch is gone, him and Martin Truex Jr. and Christopher Bell, um, Ty Gibbs kind of gets a free shot because it's his rookie season. So I'm not expecting a lot from Ty Gibbs, but uh, I expect a lot from Denny Hamlin to be able to lead the team. Uh, and I do believe he will make the final four. I do believe a second Joe Gibbs Racing driver will also make the final four. Um, I believe JGR, they they were, in my opinion, a little bit off last season. They weren't far off, but they were a little bit off. And I believe Christopher Bell will make the final four as well. I think Christopher Bell is, is hitting the stride of becoming a lethal contender week in and week out. You saw it towards the middle and the end of last season. He, he, it was just starting to tick. And so I believe Christopher Bell will also make the final four. Um, when it comes to the final two spots, uh, it's, there's a lot of really good drivers. I will put one Hendrick car in there. I didn't know exactly who to pick because I think Kyle Larson had a subpar season in terms of his standards. And to me, it is between Kyle Larson and Chase Elliott. Um, I'm going to go with Chase Elliott. I think Chase Elliott will make the final four I, uh, and, and over Kyle Larson. I'm not really, I don't really have, that, that's a coin toss. I think both of them are really good. I think both of them can make it. Just in my final four, I believe that, that JGR will be really strong this year. And again, my predictions might be completely wrong if JGR don't have the speed, which is why I probably should renew the predictions after the first four to five races of the season because you have to see who has speed. And, and what teams might not have it, who might be able to gain it towards the middle of the season. But it's very easy to see who has speed and who will be able to gather those playoff points early on in the season. Last season, it was the Hendrick cars and Ryan Blaney, but Ryan Blaney didn't win. So that was the one, one issue that was going on there. I have uh, Denny Hamlin, Christopher Bell, uh, Chase Elliott, and I have Ryan Blaney in my final four. I think this is the season that Ryan Blaney will start to win some races. I do believe that he will be the one to carry uh, Penske Racing a little bit. I think Logano is going to have a little bit of a slump, post-championship uh, slump. I, I think it's just a little bit natural. Um, I believe Ryan Blaney will be extremely motivated after a strong run last season, but he was not able to win races. It just was not working with him. I believe that team will be extremely motivated i believe that penske is going to put some really fast race cars out there for him and i think ryan blaney is going to have a very strong season i expect around four wins for ryan blaney next season i believe he will represent penske while chase Elliott represents uh chevy and hendrick motorsports and two jgr cars uh with denny hamlin and christopher bell in um in the playoffs in the in the championship race that's my prediction i think guys who will be strong that will miss out will be kyle larson um i think he will miss out i believe that ross chastain will also have another strong season but i believe he will slightly miss out um kyle bush at rcr i, I don't know if that's going to be a, a full-on hit yet uh kevin harvick in his last season the only reason i haven't put shr in there is because i don't believe the organization has shown enough in the last few seasons for me to just throw a random dart and say that shr will make the final four um and if they do or if they have speed it's not actually kevin harvick that i believe is going to uh be the strongest there so my dark horse because this leads perfectly into it my dark horse for the season is chase briscoe now he did get very close to making the final four but he he was a dark horse he didn't he wasn't a, a consistent performer with top level speed week in week out um, it was a big surprise to see him almost make the round of four. He did make the round of eight. This season, he's my dark horse. Last season, I picked Daniel Suarez. I was a little bit off. If I just picked Ross Chastain, I would have been right. Daniel Suarez did a fantastic job. He did get his win. He did do well in the playoffs, but I don't think he... How do I explain? 
he wasn't the dark horse that came completely good. The dark horse that came completely good was his teammate, which was Ross Chastain. I was close. I picked the right team in track house racing, but I didn't pick the right driver. This season, I'm going with Chase Briscoe. I might be wrong again. I'm, there might be another driver in there at SHR that is able to surprise us. I don't pick. I don't put Kevin Harvick in dark horse category. He's done it. He's proven it. I don't think he's a dark horse. I believe Chase Briscoe is. Uh, I believe he is someone that can maybe win multiple races um, because I believe in his road course ability. I believe in his short track ability. I think his uh, his intermediate racing is getting better as well. Um, super Speedway is still some some stuff to prove, so we'll see there. But I, I, I think with the amount of road course races that are on the schedule and the amount of short tracks that are on the schedule, I believe he can be able to do something. Um, he just needs to just have a little bit more speed in the car. That comes with SHR and the organization. It doesn't come with anything um, about, about him. I, I think he's my dark horse on the season. I think it's very important to talk about Kyle Busch and what he might do with RCR. And to be honest, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm really up in the air about this one because I think Kyle Busch is a fantastic talent. Talent. I think the, the, the fresh air is going to help him. He's going into a car that did win multiple races last season. So it's all there for him. But I, I, compared to the other guys that are fully settled in, I think it will be an okay season. I think he can win two to three races, but you know, as you guys know, I don't have him in my final four. So if he's not in the final four, I don't think it's a failure. I just don't. I mean, like with RCR, here's my thing about RCR. You guys know it. They have to show me more as an organization. I know Tyler Reddick did very well, but Austin Dillon just, just not there. It's just, it's just not there. Like for an organization to be able to become a championship contender. Do I think Kyle Busch can raise that level? I I don't see it. I don't see a Kevin Harvick 2014 scenario happening with Kyle Busch for the sole reason that I haven't seen the organization do it before. I saw SHR do it before. I saw SHR with Tony Stewart light it up for, for multiple seasons and, and put speed in the car. And then when Kevin Harvick showed up, it was a boom. Like it became the most dominant car in the field. I don't see that happening with Kyle Busch. Not because of Kyle Busch. But because of RCR not having the ability to become a dominant, dominant team, and for the fact that Kyle Busch was already at JGR, and it, it wasn't like a Kevin Harvick carrying RCR and then moving to SHR. It's more of a Kyle Busch at JGR. His teammates were, you know, level with him. He wasn't the best driver at the team. Then going to R the RCR and then becoming a champion championship contender and a dominant force. I just don't know about that. So I have him performing okay for the season. I would be pleasantly surprised if they do um, really well. And I think there's also important to talk about 23XI Racing with Tyler Reddick going there and with Denny Hamlin being there. Not Denny Hamlin. <laughs> He's the owner. Uh, not Denny Hamlin. With, with Bubba Wallace being there. I think it will be another improvement season. I think they will win races. Um, I think they will make the round of eight. But I, as you guys see, I don't have them in the round of four just because I believe JGR will be a little bit stronger. But if JGR is strong, then 23XI will be strong. So it, I, you, you could take out a Hendrick car. You could take out Ryan Blaney and put in um, Bubba Wallace or Tyler Reddick. I'm more fascinated with that, the battle between the two. I think Bubba Wallace is going to have um, a lot of competition here with Tyler Reddick uh, when it comes to who's going to carry that team. I thought Kurt Busch did a really good job being the veteran driver, but now that he's no longer going to be a full-time driver there, it's going to be two young guys battling it out uh, in the team, and they have uh, really direct head-to-head -head competition. So we're going to see how that goes. I think it's going to be another year of growth for 23XI, but I don't think they are quite there yet to challenge you know the head team which is going to be jgr uh and hendrick motorsports and penske racing um and those teams like that i think they're very close but i don't think they're going to be quite there yet expect a few wins expect the round of eight but i don't think they're going to get a car into um the round uh the championship round again i'm not going to predict the champion i predicted the final four so denny hamlin Christopher Bell, Chase Elliott, Ryan Blaney. That's my final four. And I'll also go ahead and predict the Daytona 500, which is literally impossible nowadays because of how hard it is to win that race when how when how hectic it gets. But for the Daytona 500, I actually do. I'm 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 going with. I'm I'm literally basing this off one little change to the Chevy Camaro. Apparently, the Chevy Camaro is a little bit flatter, like the nose isn't as pointy. 
which means I believe they will race better at the super speedway. So I'm going to pick a Chevy Camaro to win the Daytona 500. I'm going to pick a driver that's been very close, and I believe he is the best uh, plate racer at Hendrick Motorsports. Uh, so I'm picking Chase Elliott. I'm going to pick him to win the Daytona 500. Um, and so that's my pick. I, I'm not basing it. Picking the Daytona 500 is impo impossible, man. Like, you could be in the lead, and then you could be upside down down the back straightaway. Like, I, I don't know, man. It's 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 tough. I'm going with an aggressive driver. Um, You know, Brad Kozlowski, Chase Elliott, Denny Hamlin, Ryan Blaney. Those are the guys I'm looking at. While, uh, Joey Logano. Don't, don't forget him. While the um, plate racing is unpredictable, I do believe you can still control your destiny, and I believe you have to be aggressive in order to win that race. And so that's why... I have a little bit of a prediction when it comes to the, the best drivers there. Um, you know, Denny Hamlin probably goes in as one of the favorites, being a, a three-time Daytona 500 champion. Uh, but I think Elliott wins his first one. He's been close. I think Elliott will win it. I also believe Bubba Wallace can be really strong there, man. I believe he's come close. He's a fantastic plate racer. If Toyota can bring a really strong car look for for um for him to be there as well alongside denny hamlin um carrying that toyota gang over there uh but my, i'm going with chase elliott those are all my predictions for the season let me know in the comments down below what you think i'm, I'm a little bit lightheaded because i've been talking so much i'm very excited for the season the clash is this weekend so uh we'll see how it goes again let me know what you think in the comments am i wrong am i right it's just predictions i'll come back to this later in the season what happens and maybe i'll make another one um in about two months after we've seen a little bit of what the cars and the season's going to be like and maybe we could predict it, predict it a little bit more take care of yourselves enjoy the rest of your day and i will see you guys tomorrow follow me on twitter and description already links in the description down below take care of yourselves and peace out